Hey y'all. Ooh, this light is bright. I'm gonna go over here and turn it down while I wait for some of y'all to come into the room. Ooh, I'm too yellow for that light to be that bright. But anyways, <sighs> see I hate this when nobody comes on and I don't wanna get started without a lot of people on because I don't like repeating myself and then people always come on here talking about, oh, I missed you, okay, I'm sorry. But I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, you know, I haven't done live in a long time because I've been really, really busy and um, things are going well and we're pretty much caught up on orders and stuff like that, so that's a good thing. But I get a lot of divination clients um and um pretty much that you know whenever i have a slot open um i am able to fill it which is a blessing in and of itself but what i'm finding hello everybody is that most of the people who especially are not really uh, familiar with with magic and divination and things like that often get divinations where a divination is not needed or a situation where for example they believe that there's been some type of hex or curse put upon them usually a divination is always needed but not for what they think it's needed for and so I've, I've found that I have had a lot of customers clients my glasses are probably dirty as all get out I had a lot of customers and clients come to me uh, for what they perceive to be spiritual things. And they are. At the end of the day, every problem has a spiritual uh, component to it. But that magic is not always the way somebody needs to be working out a particular issue or problem. Magic can enhance solving a particular problem, but... Often, we do not look at the root of our problems. And that is because of a lack of self-prioritization. A lack of self-love. Because I am the firm believer that we cannot be good for our families, our, our people we have relationships with, romantic relationships, domestic relationships, we cannot be good for our children or the jobs that we do if we are not good to ourselves first. We, we, we know the basic things, you know, eat well, get your rest type of things. But that is not really what is self-care. So often, self-care has a lot less to do with the physical, mundane things that you're doing and more to do with what? you're doing here where where is your mind your mind controls you your mind is what says here I'm going to put one foot I mean literally there was a time in my life when I was so depressed that I would literally have to tell myself okay just put the right foot on the floor and sit up and put the other foot down literally had to talk myself through sitting up and getting out of the bed every morning okay so the mind being at the root of all that we do we do have to and it's gonna take some unlearning especially if you are a black or brown person or a woman <laughs> any people that don't have a certain subset of privilege it's going to be very difficult to begin to trust yourself when the whole world, when the whole world tells you you ain't shit. Think about that. So then we get into these self-fulfilling prophecies. We get into these things where we believe the lies that we're telling ourselves. And so this is this is the thing, and this is what I pose to my client tonight. If we can, like, if we get certain gifts, whatever they are, 
from, and everybody has gifts. Everybody, every human being, whether you believe in spirituality or not, you have intuition. You have conscience. You have that voice. My, my battery's running low, so I'm going to have to make this quick. That tells you, you know, yes, you should be doing this. No, you shouldn't be doing that. And what I tell people I, from my own personal experience in my life is what I have discovered is when I had some shit go down in my life, if I really, really took the time to sit down and think about it and backpedal my way through that process, I can get back to the point of origin where I really fucked up. And so then what I do is I then examine that point of origin where I made a mistake. Understand this. The first time you do something and it's fucked up, it's a mistake. Mistakes happen and they are to be learned from. But then if you do it again and again and again, it's an intention. So we believe in magic that our intention is everything, right? So why would we continue to intentionally do some dumb shit? You know, I don't know about y'all, but it's like, yeah, I have made the mistake of having relationships, both romantic and platonic, where you knew you were not serving your best self with that person or in that situation. But we settled. We chose not to... Move to our bigger selves. You know, you know, people can call that your oversoul, your spirit, that 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 everything that makes you you. And so if we don't take the time to build within ourselves things like boundaries, things like morals, I'm not talking about Christian morals and yeah, no sex before marriage and all that other control patriot patriarchy bullshit that's not what i'm talking about and people are different because people have varying degrees of what fucking is right for them and wrong for them okay and that's okay but the minute you begin to betray that people is the minute you fucked up and so the great thing and you know i try to put spirituality in in a language where maybe a non-believer could really get this and really understand that to honor yourself, your first mind, when you that third, that's what they call that third eye when it's a mm, 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 or it says yeah, and we don't listen to it is the minute we fuck ourselves. It is the moment that we deny ourselves. It is the moment that we say, I am not a God. And guess what? Because we are human beings and we have God-like qualities. And I do believe that there's levels to this shit. But I know there are things that I am God over in my life. Things that the creator, because in voodoo, we say the, the, the bandier is busy, okay? The creator is busy creating, evolving things and puts these soldiers of our spiritual court in front of us. Your ancestors, your angels, your guardians, your spirits. You've been given by the very nature of who you are control. And often when it comes to matters both mundane and spiritual, we choose not to control. And we all do it. We all do it. Yes, there are certain things you have control over. There are certain decisions you can make. And there are certain things that you have to manifest. I mean, you know, that's like delighting a job search candle. I tell people this shit all the time. You lit a job search candle, but did you go fill out a resume? You've been on, I don't even know what people use to find jobs. I'm going to look for a job in over a decade. Monster.com or whatever, that career builder. Did you put yourself out there? You know? And so putting yourself out there 
you know, and it, you have to understand this stuff comes, you know, if, if you guys are listening, you're in your 20s, 30s, there's a lot of stuff that you're going to come through. And there's more stuff even after I'm in my 50s. There's going to be more stuff that, you know, God willing, creek don't rise that I'm going to come through. And I'm going to learn lessons. The difficulty is when we do not allow these lessons to build us and we allow these lessons to break us. And some lessons, some lessons break the fuck out of people, y'all. So don't get it twisted. And I don't think it's about being weak. I think it's about being human. But for the most part, these lessons, these kicks in the asses that we get, you all don't understand this. Another thing about magic, magic is balance. The whole universe, the reason why the planets move in which they do. We're going through a cycle right now, astrologically, that we have not been through since 1777. And if you don't know the significance of that date, you might want to go back and look at American history. Okay? So, yes, yes, Eric. See, I just I love it when people listen. Because I firmly believe that they, what you want, if it's for you, and if it fits your spirit, you can have it. Stop doing things that don't sit well with your soul. If anything, the events that have passed in 2020, I learned that lesson. I'm going to stop doing shit that don't sit well with my soul. If it don't feel good, if it don't feel right, there's no reason for you to do it. You know, there are situations where people have to do things like feed their kids and keep a roof over their heads and things like that. And we'll make bad decisions in order to do so. We have to sometimes in life be prepared to live with the consequences. Be able to find your way out in a situation where the ramifications of what you've done won't haunt you for the rest of your life. And often, it's found right here. The moment of truth. And then, like I told people, learn a divination tool. But you have to understand, think about this. I want you all to think about this really hard. And I'm going to give you several examples. So no matter who you are, Maybe you'll get what I'm saying to you. I got a, I got a man. And I love this man. But this man don't listen to me. You know? This man does things that are not in my best interests. Okay? Your mind tells you that you need to put this motherfucker shit in the box on the left. Your first mind. Before I got a chance to travel all down here and in here and down there in your stuff and confuse you. Because you got, you ever see those videos, those cartoons of the internal organs fighting each other? There was this one of the little rascals, I know I'm dating myself, where these kids ate all this badass candy, junk, and food, and it was in there fighting in them and it made them all sick. So. Really, I see this third eye, this first, I remember my very, very Christian, first Catholic, then Christian, uh, mother-in-law told me, always trust your first mind and know what for you is for you. You plan with balance, you plan for greatness, but you don't plan for so much greatness that you ruin yourself financially. Okay? <laughs> and you, you can't. That's not the way that works moderation understanding because sometimes you'll get a problem and you don't even really understand it but do do if you have to journal that shit or whatever the first time you get that red flag write it down okay so as you're examining the situation is this really a red flag is this really some shit that i should not be doing you know, because what happens is, is we talk ourselves out of or into things that don't coincide with our spirit. And then we wonder why we're all fucked up. And trust me, I have done it, done, do it. I hope not to do it again, but it happens. It happens. And the only thing you can learn from that is to the next time your spirit tells you to go one way, that you go that way. 
instead of trying to go the other. A lot of people are depressed and sad and remorseful about their lives because there were opportunities that they wanted and they knew they could do, but they didn't do them for whatever reason. And I'm gonna tell you that one of those things is fear. And fear is, doesn't have any room in your, in your third eye, in your first mind, because it's the first thing that comes to you. It's only when we take time to sit and ruminate about whether or not we trust ourselves enough to know what's good for us. And we've been set up as black people by society as we don't know what's good for us. Look at how they live. And see, as a young person, you know, you just, you're, you become, by the time you're five years old, you become who you're going to be, really. And if that environment is so fucked up and you don't understand why you got there in the first place, that's a problem. So it's very important that you educate your children um, in ways that are appropriate to their age with an understanding of why things are and that they are not inherently bad. See, that's the problem I got with the church and Christianity. You're not going to tell me I just showed up on the scene fucked up. It's going to set you up for a lifetime of oppression because you came out and was taught from the minute you could consciously think that you are fucked. And then the self-fulfilling prophecy begins. So that is why when people talk about representation in the media, in academia, and in all of these places, including magic, because you name one thing that when you are, that our people are given exposure to and taught how to do that we do not excel in, that we do not take over. And basically, the history of modern humanity was to wipe out our ability to do so. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and say that we'd be more humane than our oppressors, if that would be the case. And I certainly wouldn't ask it of anybody. I know personally I would try to be within my own boundaries and my own limits. But people, you know, people want to belittle certain things when it comes to the self-care movement. It's not about bubble baths and all that. Sometimes it is about a, taking a goddamn bath. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it is about eating right. Sometimes it is about going to bed. But everyone knows, scientifically, if the roots of something are bad, the plant will die. So if your roots are bad, if your mindset is bad, the origin of all of your manifestations is bad, that's what needs to be fixed first. And some people, you know, I strongly suggest it, that you get therapy, okay? Because like I said, I was gonna give you some examples of when you give somebody something and they don't appreciate it. So, you know, just like I make this analogy all the time, you give your kid a car and they've never had to work for it versus the kid that had to pay for a car or pay for its maintenance or do something for it. But number one, they learn how to take care of a car. And because they worked for it, they're more grateful. But we've all had instances where either our partners, our children, our jobs, our family, our friends have let us down. We have bestowed certain advantages to them and they did not take advantage of those things. And, you know, think about how that feels when you try to give somebody a gift and they don't like it and they don't want it. They don't even realize what a gift it is. They just throw it right back at you. You know what that feels like. So how do you think as a spiritual person, the creator, the ancestors, the gods, goddesses, and spirits, how do you think they feel when you get, they give you a gift and it's usually that first sight, that conscience, and you don't use it? In fact, not only do you not use it, you throw it away. You say, nope, I'm just not going to use that. I'm not, I'm, in fact, 
In fact, I'm going to go do some opposite shit here. And usually we do it to please other people. So, the reality of the matter is, the people pleasing thing, I think it's part of human nature. I know that I prefer to live my life in harmony with the people around me. And I don't like, I'm, I ain't for the shit. You know, I'm, I'm like, let me go here in my little corner and sell my little magical goods. And I ain't fucking with people. Okay. So I understand that there is a particular type of avoidance of conflict that we have as human beings. But do not allow your fear of conflict to make you sell yourself out. Don't sit and wonder, damn, how did I get here? And so, you know, the earlier we can learn this, the better, because I'm thinking... <laughs> When I heard, and when I heard that, that phrase, how did I get here? I thought back to like my undergrad years in college and well, numerous hangovers and experimental things that I smoked, snorted, and drank. And I'm like, you know, that could have gone real bad for me. And so you are going to spend certain parts of your life, especially as younger people experiencing things, wondering how you got here, but at no part of your development, and that's even with little children, that's why we teach them how to behave, you know, at no point should you abandon that self-love. And so the big, and so when you have self-love, you care about yourself. That doesn't mean that you're selfish. That doesn't mean that, you know, you think about yourself more than others, but you should because you can't be there for others if you're not there for yourself. You can't instruct people on things that you don't know for yourself. And so that's just basic logic, science, whatever you want to call it. So start applying that very, very much with your spirit. Because you do have, everybody has a spirit in different religions, called different things in the spirit of your head that governs you, that guides you. And, you know, when you listen to that spirit, that means you trust yourself. That means you listen to yourself. And that is the first step to ever achieving any form of self-care and coming to that self-love, even when we've been in a society that tells us that there is nothing to love about ourselves. We can all find it within ourselves to find out that that shit just simply ain't true and figure out the ways you're going to get there with a therapist, with spiritual work, your ancestors, all of that. The way you treat the energy that you project onto other people. All of that. You know, but there's no way that you can, you know, when I do divination, if I didn't trust that the spirits were helping me give information to people, I wouldn't do it. And so we have to learn how to do that with ourselves first. That's real self-care. So please, when you have to make a decision, make sure you're making it in accordance with your own spirit. And if you feel like your spirit's kind of shitty, work on that too. But always, always make decisions that are going to be not only in the best interest of anything around you, but are going to be in the best interest of you. And then that will help you be more effective with everybody and everything else in your life. Y'all have a good evening. Take care. Bye-bye.